Glory to God. We all uh, had our clocks rolled back today, right? Praise God. And we rejoice in the Lord about that, right? Because we rejoice always. We don't fall in line with their schemes, their rituals. Their, their whole ritual, guys, their ultimate ritual is time, altering time. That's what they want to do because they want to have uh, an imitation eternity. They want to loop time and live in that same time frame. This is their science they're working on, okay? And apparently God made it that way where they can do it. Re remember what he said at the Tower of Babel? He said, oh, there's nothing they're not going to be able to do now. Let's go down and confound their languages. Because God, when he put everything together with his spoken word, there was a bunch of science involved and mathematics. And so he did that for a test. He did that for a test for the devil in their crowd. Okay? Are we going we're gonna to mess with God and think we're God? Or are we going to continue to praise him and love him and trust him in everything and just let him be God and do his thing at his timing? Well, the devil steps forward and says, no, we can't do that. We got to do it at our timing, and we surely don't want to spend any eternity in hell. So they're trying to alter scriptures, and they're trying to alter time. And this rolling your clock backwards is all part of that thing, rolling back time. You know, Cher sang about it, if I, if I could turn back time. So many people have sung about this thing, and it's ritualized, okay? So instead of we Christians, because we're, we're part of the system, we have to roll our clocks back, or I'll get in trouble Monday at work if I show up an hour late or whatever it is, you know? early or, you know, whatever it is, but we don't complain. We don't whine. We don't bellyache. Okay. We rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice because we know what's going on. We see the devil's hand in everything, but we also see that God's about to yank the devil's hand right off his shoulders. Okay. And beat him over the head with his own arm kind of thing. And so we're thankful about that. Praise God. Now, Hey, today we're going to be in the Bible. We're going to be looking at judges 17, judges 17 and 18, a lot of verses to cover. And so let's cover them. Amen. I am thankful that you all have joined us here today. We rejoice in, in your being here and we rejoice in the Lord always. And again, we say rejoice. And that's that's now and always. That's when the sun sets at five o'clock this evening. OK, we're going to rejoice in God. It'll be it'll be later than that. But soon, closer we get to December, it'll be all oh, that time. And we're not going to get depressed and miserable and down. We should have been raptured by then anyway. OK. We're about to be raptured here very shortly because of God's time frames and where he's at and what he's showing us all around the world, his signs. You guys have noticed his signs, right? You've seen his signs in the heavens. He told us to be looking for them. And this coming up Tuesday is going to be the big blood moon. And this is the very blood moon that we're going to see here before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Mentioned in Joel 2 and Acts chapter 2. This is the very blood moon. We know that God is angry right now. He's officially angry. He became officially angry on the 29th of Elul, the 25th of October. His anger is official. It is not just at individuals. It's not just at a nation. It's at the world. His anger is Boiling up over those that love the world, who hate his son, who hate the crucifixion, who hate his plan, who hate his gospel, who hate his word. God's anger is official now, and this is his wrathful anger, okay? Now, he's not showed himself out yet. He's raging inside of his heart, and he's about to show himself out at the rapture. The rapture is going to be an incredible judgment upon the earth, the earth dwellers will be in trouble when the rapture happens, okay? And then God hadn't even broke the first seal just yet. It's not official, uh, the judgments of his wrath. But he is raging right now, and you better know it. But not with us, not with those of us who have the Son. He that has the Son has life. We've believed in the finished work of Jesus Christ. We love God's story. We love the way he tells it. We're going to go with him on it. We're not going to add anything to or take anything away from it. We're going to rejoice in our Lord, and we love his word. All right? Let's check out his word in Judges 17. Judges 17. Remember, there, this was a time when there was no king in Israel. They came in. Joshua, they cleared out the land. The 12 tribes were supposed to have been settled in their areas, and then the judges come along. They don't have a king. That God raises up a judge, and what he does is raises up a judge after Israel has sinned, 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 and been taken into captivity and been overtaken by another nation, the, the Philistines and others. And then they would raise up a judge. God would raise up a judge to 
you know, knock out the Philistines to get the freedom back to the people, and they would worship God for a little bit, and then they'd go back to their own wicked hearts. So that's the time frame we find ourselves in. Chapter 17, verse 1, And there was a man of Mount Ephraim, whose name was Micah. And he said unto his mother, The 1,100 shekels of silver that were taken from you, Mom, which you were cursing about, you were cussing up a storm, and spake us also in mine ears, Behold, I'm the one that stole it all. It's with me. I took it. And his mother said, Oh, blessed art thou, my son. Verse 3, And when he had restored the 1,100 shekels of silver that he stole from his mom, his mother said, I had wholly dedicated the silver unto the Lord... For what purpose? To make false gods. To make graven image. Oh, I dedicated myself to the Lord. And so many people, guys, in the church today think they are doing the Lord a service while they're doing their own wicked hearts a service, which is in cahoots with the devil himself. Blaming it on the Lord. Cody and I were just talking about some churches around the world, and you can't talk about that particular preacher. Our family members will freak out. And we who know the Bible know that that man is a heretic. That man doesn't even believe the gospel. And people praise the Lord over a heretic. People praise the Lord over an unbeliever. People praise the Lord and rejoice in the Lord and lead other people. You've got to watch this guy. He's a man of God, and he's not even a man of God. He's a man of Satan. He's a man of selfishness. He's a man of the money. And here's this guy, Micah. He stole 1,100 shekels of silver from his mother. He gets this conscience going on. He heard his mom cussing. He heard his mom complaining. He heard his mom crying. And he came forward and said, Mom, 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 it was me. I, I'm the one that stole. And she says, Bless you, my son. Oh, praise the Lord in the name of the Lord, Jehovah. Now, this is L-O-R-D Adonai. Okay, this is the great God, our, our Father. And uh, oh, Adonai, oh, praise him because I, I, I had that money to go make some false gods with. And that's what we see in America today, guys. We see the Lord being worshipped alongside of Baal. We see the Lord being worshipped alongside of devils. And God said, I will never, ever be worshipped that way. We saw Judah doing that later in line. They had the temple. They would go to the temple. And then they would have their Freemason rituals in Ezekiel chapter 8 and others. And God said, you will not serve me and Baal. You cannot serve me and Baal. And that's right where America is right now. And they're praising the Lord for all the gods they serve. They don't serve God, him alone. They have other gods before them. Their favorite sports team, the Jewish star, the star of David, that is an idol like you wouldn't believe. God hates that star. And churches have it up on their platform. The people carry it, wear it as a necklace. And God hates hates that. Oh, I've praised the Lord and I'm serving the devil. I praise the Lord. And it's Solomon's insignia of the demons and the, what the demons have taught him. And God's sick and tired of that. And the 1100 shekels, mom, verse two, that were taken from you, uh, that you curse, you spake also in mine ears. Behold, the silver's with me. I took it. And his mother said, blessed be thou of the Lord, my son. When he had restored the 1100 shekels of silver, his uh, to his mother, his mom said, I had wholly dedicated all that unto the Lord from my hand for my son to make a graven image and a molten image. Now, therefore, I will restore it unto thee. My goodness. She says, you stole it from me. Now you're confessing and giving it back. And I wanted to make gods for it. So I'm going to give it to you, my son, and let you make the gods with it. Verse four. Yet. He restored the money unto his mother, and his mother took the 200 shekels of silver and gave them to the founder who made thereof a graven image and a molten image, and they were in the house of Micah. And the man's Micah had a house of gods. Guys, this is the American church. You must understand the entire parallels of this while we are going through this passage and the results and what's about to happen. Okay? And so God comes along, he's searching our hearts, he's searching our houses right now, and this is why he is mad. He is angry at the world, and he's angry first at those that call themselves of his church and worship all the false idols around them, okay? This Halloween was a part of it. We have known in this group, and the old time groups have always known that Halloween is evil, it is wicked, it is of the devil. Anton LaVey confessed it, and we all knew that back in the 70s and the 80s. What, that, what he said was true. He's the guy that started Satan, the Satan church. He's the, he's the guy that wrote the Satanic Bible. And he said to worship Halloween is to worship the devil, to 
uh, partake in Halloween is to worship the devil. And guys, guys, what is particular? What is particular to a coven? And when they all get together, they put on clothing that is not their everyday clothing. They put on costumes and they wear masks. Right? Everybody remember that? They wear masks that Satan, it, Satan can't stand their human faces, so they have to hide their faces behind masks and costumes. That is a satanic ritual. Who agrees with that in this room? Who knows that from everything you've studied in your life? Yeah. Now the churches in America have gone to it, and they all, so many of them, had a satanic ritual at their church last week and invited the neighborhood to their satanic rituals. That's not what the pilgrims did. The pilgrims... They had an end-of-the-year harvest at the end of November, not the end of October. Why did we change it? Because we wanted to join the devil and cloak our Halloween in our harvest festival. You were wearing a costume, and God still sees right through it as it being Halloween because he knows when the American Harvest Festival is and should be. It's a time we call Thanksgiving when there's no giving of thanks. Everything has changed in the American church. Everything has changed because we no longer serve God, but we praise God for the other gods in our lives. We, like Micah and his mama, we just, oh, thank God for our other gods. Thank God for our other life here. Thank God for our rebellion. Thank God for our witchcraft. Thank God for our wizardry. Does God hate witches? Does he hate wizardry? Does he hate everything that has to do with the occult and the evil side? But we, the church... Praise God for our harvest festival at Halloween. And we get to dress up like the ghouls and goblins like the rest of them. We thank God that we get to dress up like monsters. We thank our Lord that we get to pretend to be his enemies for a day. We thank God. For, everybody tracking with me right now? Is everybody tracking with me right now? That is what's going on in the American church. And you don't need to question why God is raging right now. God is raging because of you, Christian. Because of you, Micah, because of you who've stolen the silver, you've not given him offerings, you've not blessed the hungry in years. You don't care nothing about the hungry. You take all the silver you make on your job and you invest it into your fat gut and to your wicked hearts and your wicked desires. And God's sick and tired of it, man. And so this Micah did the same thing. He restored the money and they, they went ahead and made another God for his house of gods every Buddies, I guys, I, when I say everybody, I'm talking 90 plus percent of the Christian church. You got a house of gods in your house. You got a house of gods in your heart. You, you've got Jesus so far down the list, other things in front of him. These are your gods. These are your gods, oh America. And oh, I thank God for my gods. Continuing on. Verse 5, this is Judges 17, 5. And the man Micah had a house of gods, and he made an ephod and a teraphim. Uh-oh. That was only for the Levites. That was only for the priests, an ephod. But this guy's stepping out, and he's doing it his own way. He's all willy-nilly. Me and God, we have our own thing. And he consecrated one of his sons who became a priest. Uh, yeah, you. You be, who, who, are, who are these people a, of the tribe of? Ephraim. Ephraimites are not priest. The Levites are priests. And this guy chose, ah, yeah, one of you. Well, my son, you become my consecrated priest. Verse 6. In those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Do you guys know that we honor God with our lips and say he's the king of kings and lord of lords, and yet we still have no king in our land? We become the king of our own lives, of our own heart here in America. And I'm talking to the Christian crowd. I'm talking to you people who say you love God and you thank God for all your idols. I'm talking to the people who worship the devil once a year and more than that at Christmas. I'm talking to all you people who've gathered all your idols and you thank the Lord for them and you won't even thank the Lord at Thanksgiving. You won't even honor the, the festival that was set up years ago in the hearts of beloved believers who said, we're not going to dress up like the Indians. We're going to dress up like ourselves and have a party and invite the Indians so they might receive the gospel. Oh, we have, our, we have our harvest festival so we could reach our neighborhood. So you're going to share Satan with your bunch to attract them to Jesus. You have so many gods in your heart, American Christian. And God's sick and tired of it today. And we're going to appoint my son. My son will be in charge of the gods. He will be the priest. We're going to make him priestly clothing, an ephod, a teraphim, and all this other stuff. And God says, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Every man, just like in the book of Judges, right now is doing that which they please in their own eyes. 
and they have no king. Oh, Jesus is king of kings. They sing on Sunday for one hour, but he's not their king every day of the week. They have no king. American Christians, I encourage you, I implore you to make Jesus Christ your king and him alone. And don't you do that which you desire out of your own wicked heart. You let him be your king and you let him make the rules and you follow along in the word. What we have today is a people who won't even read the word. Conservative Christians who won't even read the word daily. You talk about beguiled. You talk about tricked. You talk trick or treat. It's every one of you pastors. Every one of you pastors that had trick and treat at your church, you are of the devil. You have every God in your heart except the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So on Sunday, you get up there and you break the bread and you call him King of Kings. He ain't your king if you're serving the devil. The devil's your king. There's only two masters. And that's what's happening. And that is what's happening in America. And God is angry today. And people who hated Halloween 20 years ago are embracing it and dressing up and being part of it now. We've gone right away from the Lord into our own wicked imaginations, our own wicked hearts, and we've built for ourselves our own priestly uniforms, and we don't need God and his word. And the high priest, Jesus, I'll be the dictator of both my nation, a one nation under God. My, I'll be my own king, and I'll be my own priest. I think this is fine. I don't like the way the Bible says it like this. I think that was archaic, and we make up our own priestly rules along with our own kingly rules. And Jesus in America, in the American church, is neither king nor priest. And I'm encouraging you today to repent and turn back to him and say, Jesus, you are my king. You are the true king and make him number one and there be no number two. He's, he's the only wise God. He's everything. Verse six, in those days, every, there was no king in Israel, but every, in those days, there was no king in America. Right? You guys hate Biden. He's no king. He's jacked. He's whacked, right? There's no king, but neither is Jesus. You still have bypassed the fact that there's no king in America and you have made yourself king. The ruler, the self-appointed one, that's Satanism. Do as you will. Make your own rules. Be satisfied with yourself and your own religion and your own priestly makeup and your own priestly garb. Verse 7, there was a young man out of Bethlehem, Judah, the family of Judah, who was a Levite. Now, we got a, a legitimate Levite here. This guy is truly a Levite. This guy is able to wear the ephod. This guy is able to serve in the temple. This guy is able to take the word and share it. Verse 8, and the man departed out of the city of Bethlehem to sojourn where he could find a place. And he came to Mount Ephraim to the house of Micah as he journeyed. This is the Levite. And Micah, this is verse 9, Judges 17, 9. And Micah said unto him, hey, where are you coming from, bro? And he, and he said unto him, hey, I'm a Levite out of Bethlehem, Judah, and I go to sojourn where I may find a place. I'm, I'm looking for a place to minister. I'm, I'm hiring. I'm looking for a job. I want to be a pastor of a church somewhere. I'm going to put out my resume. I've been sojourning my resume all across this land. And whoever will take me, that's where I'm a going. Not led of the Lord. He was supposed to be down there at Shiloh. The tabernacle was at Shiloh at this time. And he was from Bethlehem, Judah. And he should have stayed right down there at Shiloh by the temple. But he went a sojourning looking for a bigger and better job than the one he had. Because that's what they teach you in seminary. They teach you in seminary when you get out, you, you start out as a small time youth pastor. And then you go from there and you work your resume up and you go to a bigger church where you're a youth pastor. And finally, when you get about 30, people will start respecting you as a pastor. Then you go find you a church. And then you get that church and you go find you a bigger church and a bigger church. And that is what it, they don't necessarily say that. But that's what every guy who comes to seminary is looking for. He wants to excel. He wants to sojourn until he finds a gig that he's really satisfied with. When he should have stayed back there in Bethlehem, Judah, where the tabernacle is, where God's power is, where prayer is, where the ephod is, where the Ark of the Covenant is, the presence of God. Verse 10, and Micah said unto the guy, hey, why don't you go ahead and stay here with me? And why don't you go ahead to be, a, be as a father to me and a priest, and I'll give you 10 shekels of silver a year. Now, guys. He stole 1,100 shekels. And if 10 shekels was enough for a year's wage, this guy stole an awful lot of money and went to wasting that on a bunch of gods he carved up and had, it, had his founder carve up. He said, I'll pay you 10 shekels a year. This is the, what we're going to do at, at our church. This is, this is what we're going to offer you as a package. If you'll stay with us, we will give you 10 shekels of silver every year. We'll give you a suit of apparel and we'll feed you victuals. So the Levite said, man, dude, I'm in. And he went in. Verse 11. 
And the Levite was content to dwell with the man, and the young man was unto him as one of his sons. Here is a Levite from the tribe of Levi, uh, uh, the Benjamite from the tribe of Levi. He's down there, and he knows better, but he can't give up this deal. And the reason people don't preach truth behind the pulpit today, pastors will not preach truth. They will not mention the biru. They will not mention the judgment of God. They will not mention that he's angry right now. They will not mention that he is about to toast America. America has gone past the point of no return plus five years grace. And they won't preach that because it won't get butts in the seat next week to offer some more shekels so we could buy him a new suit. And so he could go down to the finest restaurant and eat the vittles. And the king's hearts are wicked, and we're talking about the preachers who made themselves kings. And the king's hearts are wicked who have made themselves priests. And they are the God and the priests of their own world, and they have negated the business back down there at the tabernacle where the presence of God is. And they've totally left the presence of God to stand up in the presence of a pulpit to preach a bunch of lies to a bunch of people who love to have their little ears tickled and a little joke once in a while. And they'll come back week after week after week after week because he ain't preaching the whole truth. Jesus Christ is the whole truth. And when you preach the whole truth, your crowd's going to thin, thin, thin. And people are always, oh, we had 150 last week. And before that, we had 125. We're really swelling and growing. God doesn't consider that growing. What you're doing is inviting all the other hoodlums and all the other people who don't have a king in their life. And they're making you their king, preacher. They're making you their priest, priest, because they won't sit down and read the word of God themselves. You and I have been called unto the family of God by his grace and his mercy, and we have a direct access to the Lord, and we, he is our king, and he is our high priest after the order of Melchizedek, and we love that, and we love the fact that he wants us to know his heart, and we read his Bible daily, and we read it from his perspective, not our own. We read the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Not today, in today's churches, even the independent Baptists that I grew up in who were fireball preachers who preach the truth aren't preaching the truth anymore because they can't keep butts in the seat. And so they've watered down their message and they've made the devil and his, so, his story so laughable and great and welcoming and wonderful. And y'all come. And people are coming. And they ain't getting the truth when they get there because this priest is standing in the pulpit preaching out of his own wicked imagination and he's staying away from all the subjects that'll keep people away next week because these people have itched themselves teachers having itching ears. The people want to hear the funsy stuff they got to say. Just talk to me for a half hour a week. Don't get so serious in the truth. Don't speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth like they want you to do in a court of law. Don't do that behind the pulpit. The greatest truth position of all. Don't give us all that. Not the whole truth and nothing... Give us a little truth. You know that part about Jesus' salvation and stop there. And so that's what all these churches have become. These Southern Baptists, Independent Baptists, they'll get there and they'll share the gospel, this plan of salvation every week to a bunch of saved folks. And they won't get them to disciple and grow in the things of truth, in the things of God, and where we are now, where God is now. And we're at the end of this thing and he's given us 6,000 years to get it right and we've gotten worse. We are no better. What makes us worse than these people of uh, the judges' age is all they had was Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, and that was only down there at the temple in Jerusalem. Men didn't have the scrolls. Men didn't have the word. It wasn't written in their hearts. It wasn't written before their eyes. And they took upon other scripts, you know, the movies. They took upon other scripts, you know, WWE. They took on other scripts, you know, uh, false doctrines false denominations, and they followed after those scripts, and they didn't have the true script of God, the living one, in their hearts and in their lives, dictating that he's the king of kings, he's the Lord of lords. Guys, Israel had a king, but this scripture says they had no king because they didn't make Jesus their king. I'm encouraging you today, after you've been saved, he's your savior first. If You can't get out of order with God. He's your savior first, and he's your high priest and king next. It's, it's his high priestship that makes you saved. He welcomes you into the presence of the Father through the blood of the Lamb. The high priest is the one who offers the blood. And Jesus did that for us, man. Let him do that for you. You let him become your high priest. You let his word become your script. You let his word become your heart, his heart to your heart. You let those things happen and you embrace the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. 
and quit embracing these other gods and thanking the Lord for them. Oh, we thank the Lord. The house of the Lord is filled today. That ain't the house of the Lord if you've got a bunch of devils up in there. That ain't the house of the Lord when you're worshiping false idols in that place. You may call it the house of the Lord. You know, Micah did. And his mama did, and they were just praising God for the gods. And that's what's happening in the church today, and God is sick and tired of it. Verse 13, this is Judges 7, 13. Then said Micah, now know I that the Lord will do me good, seeing I have a Levite. I got a rebellious pastor in, in our church who's only going to preach what he wants me to because I'm the one paying him. He knows that if he preaches something other than what I want him to preach, we're going to stop giving we're going to quit and we're going to head on down to another congregation. And this guy is thanking the Lord that God sent him a rebellious Levite his way to be the Lord of all his gods in his God room. That's the sanctuary of the churches today, guys. From that American flag. Why did they make the Christian flag red, white, and blue too? Why couldn't they make that some other color? Because it's all Illuminati. It's all of the devil. You know, the church doesn't have the first symbol that we can look at and see. We believe by faith. Faith, not by sight. And all this, this Christian flag and these other flags were waved high, so we'd go in and we'd murder a bunch of innocents in the name of the Crusades. God called us to lead people to Jesus, not murder them as little 10-year-olds. Chapter 18, verse 1. In those days, there was no king in Israel. What? I thought God was the king of Israel. They weren't satisfied with God. I can't see him. I need a God I can see. I need a king I can see. The tribe of the Danites, that's the tribe of Dan, sought them an inheritance to dwell in. For unto that day, all their inheritance had not fallen unto them. They quit fighting. Remember in the book previous, in the book of Joshua, they were to go in and rid the land and they would go tribe by tribe, one tribe at a time. They'd all go in and help them fight. They would clear out the giants. They'd clear out the Nephilim. They'd clear out the false gods. God said, destroy every Canaanite God in the place. You guys know that Halloween is filled with Canaanite gods? Do you guys know that the Jewish star is part of the Canaanite gods? Do you guys know that? Do you guys know that all these things that we hold dear, guys, in all of this, do you ever see God telling you in the book of Judges, in the book of Psalms, in the book of Corinthians that you are to pledge your allegiance to the American flag? Do you see that anywhere? Why do we say that? Why have we taught our kids to say that? Because it is an idol. It is a relic. It is of Babylon and the daughters of Babylon and Satan loves to have it so. We pledge allegiance to our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Is that who you plead your plea, a, allegiance to? We are a house. We are a land of false idols. And the Christians celebrate it alongside the pagans because we're all pagan. There's just a few who've come out of her, my people, and they worship and serve the creator and not the creature. But the Danites were supposed to go in and they were supposed to clear out their area, but they never succeeded at it. They quit early. So they hadn't had a land of their own permanently. So they're still seeking a land of their own. Verse 2, and the children of Dan sent of their family five men from the coast, the men of valor, of, of Zorah and of Eshtal, to spy out the land, to search it. And they said unto them, go search out the land, who when they came to Mount Ephraim, to the house of Micah, they lodged there. So they're not even in their location. They're in Ephraim. Ephraim is Dan's brother. Ephraim has his own location. Dan, go get yours. Yours has been allotted. You guys drew it by the lot, and you're supposed to be there getting rid of the giants, getting rid of the devils, getting rid of all the idols there. But they said, no, we need to go somewhere that's going to be softer than that. This is too hard of a gig. Let's go down and just take over a couple cities in Ephraim, our brother, that God gave them by lot. To the house of Micah, and they lodged there. Verse 3, this is Judges 18, 3. And they were by the house of Micah, and they knew the voice of the young man, the Levite. They, they knew his dialect. They knew how he spoke. He spoke differently than those up north in Ephraim. He spoke differently. He was of the southern tribes, and he had a different dialect. And that's why they recognized him immediately. And they turned in thither and said unto him, Hey, dude, who brought you up here? And what makest thou this place? And why has you come here? Verse 4. And, and what do you have here? Verse 4. And he said unto them, Well, 
this guy, Michael, Micah, he dealt very kindly with me, and he's hired me, and I'm his priest. I'm his hired gun. That's what pastors are in the pulpit today. You remember what God said about shepherding and hirelings? Hirelings, those guys that are there for the buck, they will not preach the absolute truth. They will not bring the fire of God like Elijah did and like Moses did. The word of God in its truth, in its purest form, is fire. And that's not being brought from the pulpit today. We're hirelings. The hirelings don't care about the sheep. When they see a wolf coming, they're going to run. Oh, I got to save myself first. A real shepherd will step in between him and the sheep and say, you're not coming in here. And they will have open rebuke. Open rebuke is better than secret love, we were told 3,000 years ago. Open rebuke, preach the truth, but not these hirelings behind the pulpit. They're, going, they're there to make everybody laugh and to get more butts in the seat next week. And they're not there for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I've been hired by this guy, Micah. I'm his personal preacher. That's where Christians have gone. They've gone to counselors and paid them money instead of being able to go to their pastor and get it for free. Freely he's received, freely he gives. We are so wicked, church. We are so wicked. We are so far from God. And the people who are supposed to be conservative, they roll their eyes when a preacher like this says what he's saying today. Roll their eyes when they didn't used to. They used to believe until they got off script. They used to believe until they liked acceptance. And the pat on the back, we were talking about that today. There's a bunch of Christians who just love that pat on the back. Oh, that was such a great song today. Y'all did wonderfully. And they come back next week to sing another special so they can get that pat on their back. And they don't care nothing about the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and the great high priest, Jesus Christ himself, after the order of Melchizedek. They believe none of that. They don't care nothing about that because they have become their own idols. Pat me on the back and I will feel the praise and I will wallow in it. And I'll be back next week for some more idol worship. Never loving God and these hirelings in the pulpit. It says, he has hired me as his priest. Verse 5, this is Judges 18, 5. And they said unto him, hey, one, ask counsel, we pray, of God. Okay, this is an idol worshiper. And they've come to him for counsel. Can, can you give us a word from the Lord? That's happening to all today. I'm talking conservative churches. These guys who are Calvinists don't even know God. Every piece of advice they give opposes the God of Scripture. And there's so many of them. There's so many false Christ risen up, man. They're giving the way. They said, can you please ask of God that we may know whether our way which we shall go to be prosperous? We're sojourning. We're looking for something special. And can you pray to God? Well, which God? He's got a bunch of them here in the house of Micah. Verse 6. And the priest said to him, oh, go in peace. Go in peace. The Lord's going to bless America again. God's going to raise up a vengeance. He's going to have vengeance for America. You just don't worry about it. The Lord's going to turn over all the wealth of the wicked into our hands. And we're going to build the kingdom for the Lord. This is the great lie that's going on now. Has anybody heard that lie? Kingdom now, dominionism, NAR. All your favorite songs come from these fools. All your favorite songs are from Bethel and from Hillsong and from Elevation and the list goes on. You have believed in a false god who is led by a bunch of gods. And all the gods have joined together and said, oh, all is well. The Lord brings you peace. Ecumenism, ecumenical. Here it comes. They're all meeting in Sinai. They're all meeting at God's holy mountain, the 13th. Here they come. It's all PC, PC, poshy. And when they say peace and safety, then comes sudden destruction. Why don't you get on the side of those of us guys that say, here comes sudden destruction? Okay, and quit believing the lie of it's going to get better and peace is coming and God's going to bring the economy down and God's going to bring Trump in the orangutan to win it all for all of us and quit believing in those lies and trust the living God. Pray for us that our will be prosperous. We want prosperity. You guys know that the gospel of prosperity is filled. Their houses are filled with false gods, with lies, with verses and scripts that oppose scripture, that oppose God himself. That Jesus is not the King of Kings and Lord of... Well, they talk about a Jesus, but it's not the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus of Nazareth. And this whole story, guys, is not new that we're experiencing now. It happened in the book of Judges when every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And that's what's happening in the churches today. The pastor, he's cool with it. So he, the hireling, is telling all these people and this flock is following a fool to their own destruction. Well, he's saying peace and safety. We had five saved today. How do you know how many you had saved today? Oh, because they said they copied a prayer that I told them to pray. The Bible says he that believeth in his heart is saved. We need to be preaching the truth that they can believe in their hearts. 
of the true salvation of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the only one who saves. Verse 7. Then the five men departed and they came to Laish and they saw the people that were there and uh, how they dwelt just carelessly. That sounds like America. We're in the aisles and we d d dwell carelessly. Well, nobody's going to attack us. We're the, we got the greatest military. We don't need walls around our border. We don't need... This is us, guys. And the same results are going to happen. We, we dwell carelessly in the manner of the Zidonians. Zidonians? Who are they? Hmm. That's where Jezebel came from. Okay? And her false god worship? Quiet and secure. That's America. We are Zidonia now. We are the daughters of Babylon. We are this wickedness. Our churches are. Our pulpits are this. And there was no magistrate in the land and th that might put them to shame in anything. And they were far from the Zidonians and had no business. So they're out there all by themselves in no man's land. They're going to make up their own rules as they go. In a place where there's just, it's carelessness and no walled villages. That's America right now. And it will be Israel here in seven years from now. It's going to track all the way there. Verse 8. And they came unto their brethren at Zoar and Eshtal. And their brethren said unto them, so what, what happened? Give us a report, man. And they said, man, arise, we may go up against them, for we have seen this land, and behold, it's very good. It's not even their land, it's their brother's land of Ephraim. They had their own land, but it's just too tough to fight. Uh, those giants and that stuff's too tough to fight. We just want to go get our own land somewhere else. That's what America has done for years and years and years. We will go into your Iraq and bomb you and take everything that's yours and not ours. We'll go into uh, Guatemala in the 50s and do the same thing. We'll go do the same thing in Serbia and all these other places. And we'll go into a place that is not ours. We have no right being there and destroy you and demolish you. Because we're after your things. There are gods. Your things are our gods in America. And what did the Christian do? They sit there eating their popcorn, watching it live on television as we're blowing a bunch of Iraqi children to hell. Oh, man, this is awesome. Praise God. And they're praising God for the same wickedness. That if they had read their scriptures, they would know that they had been partaking in themselves. And then they would repent and say, God, I don't want no part of this. I want your will to be done. Now, we do know that God has used the daughter of Babylon, the United States, to be the hammer fist to smash all the other wicked nations that he has something against. Okay? That's what he does. It's been his MO. He'll use a superpower to crush all the other little powers that God hates, and then God will crush the superpower. That's how it works. And what we're in the middle of right now is watching God crush the superpower. He's about to smoke America. All of our military leadership has left the country and will be gone for two weeks down to Africa. They've removed all of our airplanes. We've got them all around the world. We've got them in Australia. We've got them over there in Ukraine. We've got them in Europe at our European bases. All our main craft that we don't want destroyed are missing from the United States of America right now. And Americans don't know it because football's coming on in about 20 minutes. If this preacher would shut up, I can get to my game. Verse 9, and they said, Arise, we may go, go up, for we have seen this land. Behold, it's very good, and you're sitting here still. Don't be slothful to go. Let's go up and possess this place of our brother that is not even ours. Verse 10, when you go, you shall come to a people secure and to a large land, for God hath given it into your hands. Has he really? Has he really? I thought he gave it into Ephraim's hands. I thought he gave the land of Ephraim, the tribe of Ephraim, to Ephraim. But no, these guys come down with a new message and they say, God has given this land to you. You go up and take it. Claim it for yourself. Name it and claim it. Well, God already named it and claimed it for somebody else. Don't you go against God. And these guys are going against God in the name of God, just like our pastors behind the pulpits today. If you had a trunken treat last week, you are an idol-worshiping devil who opposes God because years running since the 1600s, our Freedom Festival, our Harvest Festival is at the end of November. The time when we give wonderful thanks, not when the time we give tricks. You guys know a whore gives tricks, right? Whores flip tricks, right? America, you, you and your churches are the whore, the daughter of Babylon. God is living, God's mad, he's about to smoke you. And the sinners know it. The saints don't because we rival. We just revel in everything the devil's offered us to get our shiny, our attentions off of him and off of the truth and off of his true preachers. So we could listen to these blowhards blow their lies and smoke straight up your tailpipe. 
And they're going to give great, 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 great account for that. Verse 11. This is Judges 18.11. There went from thence the family of Danites out of Zorah, out of Eshal, 600 men and appointed weapons of war. And they went up and they pitched in Kirjith Kirj Jairam in, the, in Judah, wherefore they called that place, whatever they called it, unto this day, behold, it is behind Kirjith Jerum. And they passed thence unto Ephraim and came unto the house of Micah and answered the five men that went to spy out the country of Laish and also their brethren. Do ye know that there is in these houses an ephod, a teraphim, and a graven image, and a molten image? These guys have the fake. The real is down there in Jerusalem, Benjamin. The real is down there at Shiloh. But these guys have made replicas and they look just like the real thing. That ephod, I'm telling you what, you couldn't tell a difference in that ephod that he made up here than the ones back down there at the Bible place where God is hanging out, where the Ark of the Covenant is. They look exactly the same. The teraphim, everything. These replicas look awesome. And that's what we have in the pulpit today is a bunch of replicas. They're not even real preachers. They're not even real men of God who hang out with the Lord God. And you know the fire of God's in their souls. These guys ain't that. They're the fake ones that look just like that. Verse 15. And they turned thither and they came to the house of the young man, the Levite, even unto the house of Micah and saluted him. Hey, bro. Hey, brother. Brothers, in the name of the Lord Jesus. And the 600 men appointed with them weapons of war, which were of the children of Dan. They stood by and they entered the gate. And the five men that went up to spy out the land went up and they came thither and they took the graven image and the ephod and the teraphim and all the stuff of God, plus the, you know, the, the molten image. God and God plus. We took all the stuff that looks like God, the fakery, and we took the idols with us too. And that's what happens every Sunday morning. It's happening right now as I'm speaking. The sanctuaries of the churches are filled with idols. Men have walked in with idols in their hearts while they're thanking the Lord and giving glory and praise and honor to the King of Kings. And he's not even their king. Verse 18, and these went into Micah's house and they fetched the carved image and, and the ephod and the teraphim and the molten image. Then said the priest unto them, what are you guys doing, man? Okay, this is the Levite. Remember, the Levite went up to Micah's house and Micah said, I've got idols. I just need a preacher. Here's what I'll pay you if you come and preach for me and be my pastor. I'll pay you 10 shekels every year. I'll give you a nice suit of clothes. You'll be the sharpest dressed preacher up, up in these parts and we'll feed you. Oh, man, vittles, chicken dinner every Sunday. Oh, that sounds great. And he accepted his hire as a hireling and not the real deal. Now, these guys have come up and they see this Levite there who is dressed just like a Levite down there, but he's fakery. And they taking all the stuff and he asks them, what are you guys doing? Verse 19. And they said unto him, hold your peace, lay your hand upon... Freemasons, you lay your hand on your mouth. Don't tell the secrets. Don't say what we're up to. We have a plan here, and you just need to go along with us, okay? You can go with us to be a, to us a father and us a priest. It is better for you to be a priest unto the house of one man. I mean, come on, dude. Do you just want to be the priest of one dude? Or do you want to be a priest of a whole tribe? We are the pulpit search committee. We've come from the largest church over here. We've come, we've seen you preach. We've eyeballed you and we want to give you a better salary and a better deal than this one if you'll come up and bring your fakery our way to a larger congregation. That's what's happening all across America in the churches all around us and has been for years and God is livid with that. Take your fakery in a small place and come to our bigger place and bring your fakery with you. Oh, verse 20, and, and the preacher's heart was so glad about this. And he took the ephod and the teraphim, all the fakery, and the graven image, the false god. And he went in the midst of all the people. So they turned and departed and put the little ones and the cattle and the carriage before him. And when they were a good way away from the house of Micah, the men that were in the house near to Micah's house were gathered together and they overtook the children of Dan. They, they formed a band of men and they ran upon them and they took them uh, with them. And they said, they overtook Dan and they said, why are you doing this? Verse 23. And they cried unto the children of Dan and they turned their faces and said unto Micah, what's your problem, dude? Why did you come with such a great company? You had a good gig back here. We gave you a good gig, man. Verse 24. And he said, you've taken away my gods and 
made the priest and, and you're all gone away. Uh, which I made. You've taken away the gods which I made and the priest, and you're all gone away. And what have I more? And what is this that you say to me? What aileth thee? And the children of Dan said unto him, Don't let your voice be heard among us. Shh. Quiet. The presence of the Freemasons is here, and you will not open your mouth. You will not utter secrets. You will not say the secret word Mahabon. You will not talk about the V on both sides of the V. You're not going to mention these things. You're going to shut your mouth or we will get rid of your YouTube. Okay, okay, we'll shut our mouth. You know what we say? We're not going to shut our mouth. We're going to holler from the rooftops until the Lord comes and gets us. And he's about to come get us. And he's about to come after you guys who remain. You fakes who don't even know the Lord your God. You speak his name. You speak of all the lingo. You hold your Bible in your hand. But it's all fake to you because you are not one of his. You don't hear from him. You don't care to hear from him. All you want is your accolades and your joys. And That was such a great message, brother. See you next week. And that's what these hirelings live for. Verse 25, And the children of Dan said unto him, Don't let your voice be heard among us, lest angry fellows run upon you and you lose your life. The threat of you speaking out. You shut up. You don't you tell the truth. We will kill you. The lives of your household and the children of Dan went their way and went Micah and saw they were too strong for him and he turned back and he went to his house and they took the things which Micah had made and the priest which he had and came to Laish and the people that were at quiet and secure unto all those people who were in, in a wonderful place. All, all they were lacking was a preacher. And they smote them with the edge of the sword and burnt the city with fire. Verse 28, Judges 18, 28. And there was no deliverer because it was far from Zidon and they had no business with any man. And it was in the valley. They lieth by Bethrehob and they built a city and dwelt there. And they called the name of that city Dan. And that became the northern border later. It was set up way early because they didn't display the true God, in their hearts and lives. They had false gods. They were fine with the fakery, and they turned the city of Laish into a city called Dan, and that became the northern border of wicked Israel years later. From Dan to Beersheba, which we're saying that's the, the toppest point north to the farthest point south in our kingdom, the ten tribes where we defy God after David had died, after Solomon had died, and Rehoboam became king. The kingdom split, and from Dan to Beersheba was wicked, and it was all started right here by one little man and his decision to make a false god out of the silver that he stole from his mama. And his mama blessed him for it, and then they needed a preacher, and then these other people needed, from the bigger church needed that preacher, and they brought him to their land named Dan, and they renamed it Dan after their father, the tribe, which became a city of just reprobate and evil and repute and sin and wickedness and the slaughter of children. And it was the, the God of Molech and the God of the uh, bulls were later set there. But it all started with one little fella who didn't honor God as king in his heart, who didn't honor God as the high priest. And he went elsewhere looking for what God himself is supposed to supply and for whom, whom God himself is supposed to be. And this one little sin worked its way into a magnanimous wickedness in all 10 tribes of Israel. And they provoked God into anger and wrath and jealousy over and over and over and over and over again. And that's what these little preachers, these hirelings in these pulpits are doing. Just one at a time right here. And they just affect their little congregation. And this one over here, he's affecting his a little bigger than that congregation, congregation. And this guy over here, he's affecting a larger congregation yet. And they're all affecting them unto God's anger, his rage, and he's going to come down and he's going to begin his judgment in the house of the Lord. And all these people who aren't really saved, who have all the fakery of the gospel, the fake ephod, those pretty boy suits that they wear, and all this stuff, and, and the songs just match the words in the songbook, but their heart is not there. They're fake as hell, and when the rapture comes, the true believers who have truly believed in the Jesus Christ of Nazareth are going to be raptured, and these guys are going to be the first that God kills when he gets here in his judgment. And it might not even wait until the first seal. It might be that same judgment that God saves us from in that wonderful harpazo, that snatching rapture, that he kills them all, man. And I pray that he does. I pray he wipes them out so the wicked lies can no longer spread in these little congregations. And these hirelings can no longer be pretending to be true shepherds who will give their life for the sheep. 
And all they want is money from the sheep. They want to fleece the sheep. And God is sick and tired of it, and judgment's coming your way, American church, because you've acted just like these people. You acted just like this one guy, just one guy, one guy named Micah, one guy. Don't be that guy. Don't you dare be that guy. You be the man after God's own heart, the one who sits out there by the river all by himself, and all he's thinking about is the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want God to come. I want God to save me. I want God to save my land. I want God to come. I desire Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit of God, his songs, his worship, his readings, his exhortations, his scriptures, everything. I want everything about Jesus. I want to be immersed in that. God's looking for that guy. Will you be that guy? Don't be that other guy. Be the man after God's own heart. Verse 30. This is Judges 18.30. And the children of Dan set up the graven images. And Jonathan, that's a good godly name, and it's not here in this case. The name Jonathan means gift of God. And this guy is not the gift of God, but everybody looks at him and says, Oh, thank you for those false idols, gift of God. Oh, those idols are a gift of God from gift of God. Jonathan, the son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh, and he and his sons were priests unto the tribe of Dan until the day of the captivity of the land. God got sick of them, and the land went into captivity. Guys, you are at that point, America. You are at that point, North America, Canada, and Mexico. You don't think Mexico has false idols all around, these Marys and these statues and these saints? You don't think North America is filled? The, the, the northern part of North America is filled full-blown Catholic. We got a big enough contingent here. They all worship idols. And now it's moved into the hearts of the conservative ones who believe the Bible, who aren't Catholic, who didn't come out of the Catholic church. And they are just as wicked and fake and set up with a hireling in the pulpit and not a true shepherd. And God is sick of it. Hey, read Jeremiah 23, what God cares about true shepherds and hirelings. And they set them up, Micah's graven image, which he made all the time, the entire time, this entire story, the tabernacle was still down there at Shiloh. Everybody catch that? Through this whole fake religious junk, the entire time there was a real tabernacle in a real location with real priests, a real ephod, the real scriptures, the real Ark of the Covenant, and it was still there at Shiloh. Guys, get yourself to Shiloh. Shiloh is one Jesus. Jesus is referred to as Shiloh. When Shiloh comes, we see it in Jeremiah 49. Read Jeremiah 49 when Jacob is blessing all of his sons and he gets to Judah. The scepter shall not depart until Shiloh comes. Praise God, that's Jesus Christ. Why don't you turn to the real Shiloh the, this time and not all the religious fakery that's going on around you and all the lies and all the fake prophecies and all the stuff that's being spilled out by these fake hirelings and find yourself a real shepherd we ain't got much time to find a real shepherd but jesus is the real shepherd make sure that he is the shepherd of your heart the king of your life the high priest that saved you and nobody else trade in your fakery today guys because the judgment's coming you guys know there's still the real deal down there in shiloh right the whole time not pizzazzy silver and gold and just you know tabernacle down there at Shiloh that nobody knows about. There's so many Christians who don't even know the tabernacle was at Shiloh before it was at Jerusalem. And David, before God brought in the temple to Jerusalem, he continued to go up to Shiloh to worship. I encourage you to get on God's script and know his Bible. I encourage you to get away from the fakery and the falsehoods. I encourage you to declare Jesus Christ to be your king, your savior, your Lord, your friend, and get back down to Shiloh, will you? God bless you, man. We'll see you next time.